finish tonight. Republicans love to lie and create an alternative reality to try to damage the president time and time again. For years, Republicans have been lying about our economic recovery, but recently they've gone out of control. The president's economic policies have failed. The American people know it. And this election uh, is about jobs. He wants to transform exceptional private enterprise America into neo-socialist Europe. I have a new term. It's called Obama-noma. <laughs> Obama-noma because he is such a cancer to the economy. To call this a recovery is an insult to recoveries. We have really 11.7% unemployment, not 8.1%. The cold truth is that the president has not improved the American economy. Uh, sorry, Bill. The cold truth is President Obama has improved the economy. America has re-elected the president who's helped bring the economy back from the verge of collapse. So let's take a look at some recent economic numbers, indicators, because unlike Republicans, they don't lie. A record 247 million shoppers visited stores and shopped online this Black Friday weekend. They spent an estimated $59 billion over the four-day period. Sales up over 12% from last year. And you know, the housing market's looking pretty good these days. Average home prices rose for the sixth consecutive month. Home prices are up 3% from this time last year. We've seen 32 months of private sector job growth. And finally, here's a whopper. Consumer Confidence Index is at a what? Four-year high? How could that be? It rose to 73.7, the highest level since February of 2008. President Obama is always the first one to say that there's a lot more we can do on the economy if they just, of course, pass a jobs bill. But the Republicans, they have been dead wrong about the economy all along. The lies about the economy didn't pay off. And the American people are leaving the Republican Party behind. I would say that the Republicans are just in a real bad place when it comes to explaining where the economy is. Let's turn to David K. Johnson, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and author of The Fine Print. David K., great to have you with us tonight. Uh, Glad to be here. How wrong are they? I mean, there's been this litany of comments and this narrative out there, and then all of a sudden we get some numbers like this. What's it mean? Well, if all those quotes that you heard were accurate, of course, Obama would have lost and lost almost every state in the union. Uh, the economy has been getting better, not as fast as you or I or I think anybody else would like it to get better. And the Republicans could, if they wanted, do a lot to remove the uncertainty about what's going to happen to our taxes by uh, uh, recognizing, as they said when George W. Bush was elected, that the president has a mandate from the voters and he should get what he wants. Uh, so all the indicators are things are getting a little bit better steadily. Well, consumer confidence at a four-year high. Isn't that, right. I mean, consumer confidence is the economy. I mean, if people have money in their pocket and they're confident they're going to get more, they're going to go out and spend it. Yes, uh, and, and, and there are other this? numbers that other numbers that show the same thing, you know, the number of people voluntarily quitting their job because they're confident they can get into the job, that's up. Mm. Housing prices are coming back up. Uh, the misery index, uh, that's the combination of inflation and unemployment, it's trending down. Uh, hourly worker, hourly uh, wages and hours work, they're trending up. I mean, everything is going generally in the direction you want it to go. There's noise in the data one month to the next, but the trend lines are all in the right place. David Kay, let's talk about this fiscal cliff uh, negotiation that's taken place. What if we do not get a deal? What does that do to the economy? All taxes are going to be going up, going to be $4 trillion of the economy over 10 years. That would fix a lot of stuff. But the, uh, obviously the, the concern is that we may fall into a deep recession. What do you, what's your take on all that? Well, people's paychecks will immediately experience, um, th th they'll be a little smaller. Uh, there'll be two percentage points more going to Social Security, and your tax cut will be a little higher. But Congress can retroactively change the tax law. Remember, the Republicans themselves did this when they raised taxes on teenagers who worked uh, six years ago. So the immediate effect is less than the boogeyman effect, which is, oh, there'll be horror if we don't, uh, we don't take care of this now. I think the thing to watch for is, do the Democrats and President Obama hold firm, or do they betray the people who put them in, in office? Would it be a betrayal at this point, you think? Well, I think that if, if we come up with a gimmick that really makes the tax burden not fall on the very wealthiest people, not on the Sheldon Adelsons, who's just arranged to collect over a billion dollars in dividends this year from his company, but on um, uh, upper middle class Americans and middle class Americans, I think that would be something of a betrayal, yes. 
What does this do to Republicans' credibility on the economy? After they have gone through this era of obstruction, they have uh, talked down the economy for months on end, and then numbers like this come up, uh, you'd think they'd be concerned about that. Well, I think what they're trying to do here, Ed, is if they are unable to get their own troops in line to make a deal, if they're going to pledge more allegiance to Grover Norquist than to their oath of office, which I believe people who signed uh, Grover's pledge are violating, and we do have a downturn in the economy in January, then the Republicans are going to say, see, we told you, even though they created the problem. Yeah. David K. Johnson, great to have you with us on The Ed Show. Appreciate it.